Hey, it's with great pleasure for me to introduce my colleague and uh, dear friend, our deputy chief coach, Mr. Radhakrishna Nair. Um, as you know, he's uh, not only the, the father or the, the figure behind the IWF uh, coaching courses in India, he also graduated with honors um, from an ICOCE coaching course. I think he was the only Indian within the last 10 years to do so. Um, today he's going to talk about the anti-doping process, uh, not only in India, but all around the world. And yeah, enjoy the next minutes with him. And once again, thanks a lot, Mr. Radhakrishna, not only for having today's presentation, but for your constant support during the last months and hopefully the next years. Thank you. I will pass the mic to him now. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Uh, today, today we are going to have a session of uh, doping in sports. Uh, sure that uh, you will be having some different, different ideas and uh, different thought about doping. And it is not only for doping, it is not only regarding doping, it is also regarding use of food supplements. So I think there will be some information I'll be able to share you. And uh, you can come out with any questions if you have. Uh, Mr. Raj Mohan will, will be recording your questions and at the end of the session, we'll be able to share you. So, doping in sports. Once again, uh, good morning. This is a very alarming subject in our country of all sports concern. So let us just share, let me share some ideas and information regarding doping in sports. So The dope word came from a Dutch word dope that was an alcoholic beverage from grape skins used by Zulu warriors, that is East African, Central African to enhance their power in battle. Then let us look into the history of performance enhancing drugs. The use of drugs to enhance the performance in sports has occurred at least since the time of the original Olympic Games from 776 to 393 BC. And you may be interested to know who the first athlete to be disqualified for drug use was Hans Gunnar from Sweden. And in 1968 Summer Olympics, he was disqualified use of drug and his, mis his uh, position was erased and this medal was taken back. And the test shows him positive for cocaine and alcohol in his system. In 1968, IOC made doping control and testing in, started testing in Winter, Winter Olympic at France. Then some small information about World Anti-Doping Agency. It established in 1999 and the headquarters is Montreal at Canada. And 192 countries and more than 517 sporting organizations have signed up with World Anti-Doping Agency. If you ask about the budget of WADA, it is about $25.5 million is equally shared by the member government and International Olympic Committee. And in our country, the National Anti-Doping Agency is established in 24th November 2005. It doesn't mean that we had no dope control before that. 
we had dop control before that also but a national anti doping agency with a, a national testing laboratory is established in november 2005 now let us look into the definition of doping it is not only that use of prohibited substances substances to enhance the sports performance there are some more points which comes under doping offense that is one prohibit presence of prohibited substance in athlete sample the second one is use or attempt to use it is not necessary that sample the sample should contain the Contain the prohibited substances. If you are trying to use or attempt to use the prohibited substance, are, substances also you fall under doping offence. Refusing or failing without compelling justification to submit the sample collection after the notification, immediately after the event or before the event or during your stay, the WADA World Anti-Doping Agency will be giving you a notification. If you are failing or not submitting the sample without justification then that also falls under a doping violence violation of applicable requirement regarding athlete availability for out of competition test i'll be speaking about out of competition test in the next coming slides this is that uh, regarding out of competitions the dop test is conducted in competition as well during competition as well as out of competition now there are athletes placed in whereabout by wada and even nada for uh, for their whereabout if an athlete is not found or not available the whereabout is declared to the wada or nada he is also liable for doping violation then tampering or attempt to tampering for example if the athlete try to tamper tamper in the way that diluting the density or uh, using somebody else sample uh, smuggling to the dop control room that comes under tampering and attempt to tampering then possession if any athlete even coach found in possession with any prohibited substances needles or syringes are, are also comes under Uh, violation of doping offences then trafficking trafficking or attempt trafficking that is if you try to import or smuggle or if you bring down to the country from any abroad country any uh, prohibited substances or if you are caught in airport or in any place for trafficking the prohibited substances also comes under doping violation the other one is administration or attempt to administration to any athlete of prohibited substances or prohibited method that is by the doctor by the supporting staff or even trainer if somebody is trying to administrate or administration or to any athlete a prohibited substances or prohibited method also comes under doping violation what up review and publish the prohibited uh, list every year annually this is been published in the 1st october of every year and comes into effect 3 months later that is from following 1st january of the next year i am not going to explain all the medicines what is been prohibited in the prohibited list you can easily find them in the uh, website of wada but i am just giving you small information there are four type of substances four type of prohibited list one is substances and methods prohibited in all times during competition and out of competition then the second one is substances and methods prohibited in competition uh, for example uh, there are some substances which is been prohibited during competition and out of competition but there are some substances only prohibited in competition during competition and there are substances prohibited in particular sports sports like archery shooting there are some substances which is been prohibited uh, 
to use during competition or during out of competition. Then specified substances. Of course, you must have recently learned and heard about specified substances of uh, using some specified substance of some of our athletes. Uh, these are the like, for example, marijuana is a specified substance, which in the first instance may not be punished or may not be sanctioned, but given a warning. But in the second and third incident, the same uh, doping violation uh, sanction will be done for even using of specified substances. Sanction for doping violations. Number one is disqualification of result at an event and including forfeiture of medals. A ban from all sports competing for competing or training, training or coaching for up to four years or even life in if it, if it is repeated or in the most serious crime. And publication of your anti-doping rule violation, that is another uh, one type of punishment or sanction. Of course, if a person found positive in doctors test and been sanctioned, it comes to the media, print media, as well as the visual media. It will be a great insult and in fame for an athlete caught for uh, or found uh, violating the doping offenses. Recently, you must have read about one athlete has been tested positive about two years back and been sanctioned by AAU. Then financial pen penalties. It is not directly done by WADA or NADA. It is, of course, when a person find positive in any DOP test or uh, sanction, it is a rule actually that all the prize money or prizes being awarded to the athlete has to be forfeited or withdrawn. So from the government or from the state, the money for the prize money received may be uh, forfeited or withdrawn if an athlete found positive in DOP test. You can just see that some of the infamous doping offenders uh, many are familiar to you, no need of much explanation on that. Why we should combat in doping, why should we should combat fight against doping in sports? The main reason is doping threatens athlete health. You must have seen around you and around the world, the people, the athletes who use uh, prohibited substances in the later age, they have uh, face a lot of health problems as well, even death. So that is one of the main reasons doping uh, the, we have to combat against the dope. Because if considering we are going for a long term athlete development, we need them for years with us to train. It's also it treats the integrity of sports. In other way, I can say it is cheating. It is cheating the participant who is coming without any performance, uh, performance enhancing drugs and you are part I am participating with performance enhancing drugs. That is really cheating in sports and it threatens the integrity of athletics. I am sorry, integrity of sports. And the athletes are role model to, the, to many youngsters. And the athletes, the senior athletes, the athletes are real role model for the many upcoming young athletes and youngsters. Seen using performance enhancing drugs. At not only Athletic Federation, the country is facing a big problem of this issue. You can find many, very few athletes are found violating the doping offense, but in school level, youth level, national level, there are so many cases. If you analyze, if you just go behind the results of 2018-19, sorry, 1920, there are so many junior young athletes are tested positive for doping offenses. In Kelo India, in the national games, sorry, in the junior national, in the youth nationals, in the school nationals, even in the school states, the athletes are uh, depending upon the performance enhanced drugs and they are ignorant. The young athletes don't know 
or care about the long term effect of it and of course we are create we are doing a big damage to the young generation who more me or the coach or the parents are encouraging for youth of, uh, use of performance enhancing drug as we are planning a long term athletic development plan we want them to train to more and to reach to the high performance and to the high potential why do athletes take the drugs mainly one reason ignorance about the drugs they may not be knowing the after effect and the health problems or the dangers uh, of uh, using drugs then amateurism and professionalism it is very evident that in many states by winning state medal the state is awarding money prize money and some states are uh, even for the junior national sub junior senior national if, if at all they win a national medal they are getting a good handsome prize money so this also leads to them to become rich or to get some money to uh, use the drugs and many of i'm not telling many some of the athlete decide uh, believe that without drugs we can't win it is a must for winning it is a psychological impact on them you know an athlete has having the habit of using performance enhancing drugs it is like an addiction even though he may think that without that i can run i can throw i can win so this is also one of the reason the athletes tend to take the prohibition substances or drugs and fame and fortune exactly if if you if you look into the fame and fortune if you win asian games gold medal you have become a celebrity in the country and that also leads them to use drugs and to cope up with the stress and injuries for example an athlete was injured for about an year or long after that he want to he is coming back to training he feel that to cope up with stress of injury and to come up with the, to the same standard which he or she had she need to take drugs and they fall they started taking drugs it is not much cases it is very rare cases and the pressure of from peers coach support staff family and media ah uh, it is very interesting some of the peers means colleagues your friends will encourage you may put pressure yes the other question this time if you want win you have to use this some some prohibited substance or some drugs so and some coach coach some coach some of the co some of our coaches encourage and uh, ask them and put pressure if you want win you may have to take this same like support staff and family some of the parents some of the parents also do the same so these are the reason why athletes take drugs mainly but it is very difficult to be to exist by using drugs i mean the performance enhancing drugs and it is very interesting most athletes are victims rather than culprits often the only athlete is sanctioned that is the weakest link that of course you know in our country or in any other country the one who take are culprit but the one who was administered or supported or encouraged and given are not really uh, uh, are not getting any any sign
there was an internet problem so we will start again i am extremely sorry for the internet it was lost now we got it so So as I said, most athletes are victims rather than culprits. Often only athletic sanction, that is the weakest link. As you know, that uh, the athlete is only getting sanctioned. There is no sanction for the participant. I, I'm sorry, the part, there is no sanction for the coach or a supporting staff or trainer who encouraged him or even who gave him to use that. So that is the reason that I said that more athletes are victims rather than culprits. In the athlete WADA court acceptance test form, the list of he has to list his coach, manager, trainer, and physiotherapist. If any such athlete is tested positive, it is sure that it will lead to all being watchlisted and target tested. For example, one of my athletes, one of the athletes of my, me, Radha Kishan, has been tested positive in Nevada uh, dope, dope testing. He has written my name on his uh, form. So, if, if at all, if I don't use and if I don't allow my athletes to use the performance enhancing drug, then uh, my athlete will be target throughout. Just a minute, I'll change to the other network. Okay, let me. So, can you hear me all? Then, regarding. PUE. Uh, that is therapeutic ex use of exemption. QE, QE may be granted to a player permitting to the you permitting the use of a prohibited substance in the prohibited list in certain conditions. For that, The player should submit a TUE application whenever necessary and the exemption will be granted and sanctioned in accordance with strict criteria. There is a TU committee, TUE committee with NADA, with WADA as well as NADA, consisting of independent doctors are not member of WADA or NADA. And it is a medical, in any medical emergency, treatment is a priority for a player or doctor should apply for a TUE retroactively. The age of what is the therapy 
एक्सम्शन यूज एक्सम्शन चाहिए जैसे जो कोई ऐसे बीमारी है या ऐसे एक्सीडेंट हो गया उनको कोई इंजेक्शन या कोई प्रोहिबिटेड सब्सटेंस को एडमिनिस्ट करना पड़ेगा तो उन उसके लिए एक थेरापिक यूज एक्सम्शन सर्टिफिकेट लेना पड़ेगा आप वाडा से या नाडा से ये अगर ये मत सोच लो आप एक बार एक कंपटीशन के लिए ले लिया फॉर एग्जांपल आपने एशियन गेम्स के लिए ले लिया इन 2018 एशियन गेम्स के लिए ले लिया लेकिन अगला कंपटीशन फॉर एग्जांपल 2019 वर्ल्ड चैंपियनशिप यू वांट टू यूज द सेम प्रोहिबिटेड सब्सटेंस फॉर योर इलनेस और योर इंजरी देन यू नीड टू टेक अगेन अ थेरापिक थेरापिक एक्स यूज ऑफ एक्सम्शन सर्टिफिकेट फ्रॉम वाडा और नाडा then there are the ill effect of some ill effect of doping of using androgenic anabolic steroids in males you can find breast development in males and baldness infertility liver and kidney damage and aggression or arrogancy and liver and kidney damage in female and even high blood pressure also in female you can find hair growth fertile defects menstrual disturbances disturbances infertility liver and kidney damage hoarseness of your sound and high blood pressure these are the not only these are the only these are not the only ill effects of doping there are so so many major health problems also can cause by using prohibited enhanced drugs how can we eliminate this that is very important we have to eliminate it or we have to eradicate it from our sports uh, area that one is correction and correction through education it is not just possible for nada or sports authority of india or athletic federation to conduct uh, educational classes or education on doping in different areas that india is very big from northeast to south or north to south so who can do this that is only we can do it we have to do it we coaches has to educate our athletes the uh the problems of using prohibited substances as well as the consequence of using it second is by testing of course in the national coaching camps and organized there are a routine and a, uh, there are frequent dop dop tests but it is not happening everywhere it is not possible also by nada or uh wada to go all around where the athletes are training and test them we are conducting testing in the competitions we are conducting out of competition test in the camps national camps and also afa has formed a committee with a member of a doctor and representative size and representatives of coaches to have searches in the rooms of national camps and if we found any athlete with uh any prohibited substances or even needle or syringe in their possession anyone without giving a sanction we are removing them from the national coaching camp for further for to stop their training then the punishment as you know that uh, nada has been and oh, so i'm sorry wada has been uh, imposed imposing certain sanction that also of course will to an extent will help us to eliminate this doping uh, menace then criminalization so far no country has been has done this even our athletic association president also has suggested this uh, to the government and to the nada to have to make a policy of criminalization of course if that it comes up if this if this comes up then definitely an athlete uh, athlete can be behind the bars if he violate the doping offenses 
Now it is very interesting and uh, uh, actually, in fact, that was my mission to get the information, to bring the information to you all. That is nutrition supplements and doping. I don't say that uh, nutri nut nutrition supplements are not required for to do sport performance. Let us get into the slides for further information. Nutrition supplements. It is billions industry. When I had been to Colorado Springs last in 2018, I found, I heard that 75,000 of food supplement factories are there in US. And it is nevertheless, it is not less in our country as well. Why it is booming? What is the reason? And it is widespread among sports persons. The use of food, food supplements are widespread among sports persons. And recommended by fitness trainers, coaches, even some doctors. And it is, please make it is, you should know that it is not recommended by International Olympic Committee. And not registered by the Food and Drugs Administration. And Please understand, WADA does not accept any testing certificates. One in four, and it is very interesting, one in four nutrient supplements are contaminated and you can be tested positive by using that. Why athletes are thinking of using, uh, athletes are looking to use nutrient supplements, Therefore, and they are thinking there are many benefits. For promoting adaptation training, increasing energy supply, allows more intense training by promoting recovery, maintains good health and reduce interruption of training due to chronic fatigue, illness and injuries. And they even believe that it enhances the competitive performance. But I agree that we these are the sources of energy in our body we need to do training that is carbohydrate are the main source of energy and carbohydrates stored in the liver and muscles fats are the secondary and long-term sources of energy fats stored in fat deposits of in the body proteins are essential for muscle growth and repair it's not a major resource of energy and they cannot be stored in the body of course we are not going deep because miss mihira has already had a very a uh, very good session on nutrition and its uh, requirement and its essential. And I also agree protein is uh, uh, required to respond to exercise. Amino acid from protein from, from amino acid protein from building blocks of cells manufacture of a new tissue including muscle and it repairs the damage of tissue. Proteins are the building block for hormones and enzymes that regulate metabolism. Proteins also support the immune system. I agree with all this, but I am not agreeing to have additional food supplements of protein or whey protein or amino acids, etc. Why? And why? I'll just get into the other slides. There are a lot of food supplements you can find in the uh, market nowadays. Protein supplements, whey protein, that protein, and high protein bar, amino acid preparation, and these are the biggest selling sport nutrition products in our country as well in even other countries. An adequate intake of protein is essential for muscle growth and repair. And I believe the recommended though, uh, dietary elements can be easily achieved with everyday food and hence extra protein seldom required. I don't say it is not required for all. In elite athletes, if they are not having a balanced diet, if they are not taking a balanced diet, it, they may need, but it is not just eating like uh, food. You have to go, a, you have to go a biochemical, you have to undergo biochemical examinations and you should find what what you are def deficient and with the monitoring of a doctor, a medical doctor or a reco recovery expert, it should be used. 
the whole protein have advantage of individual amino acids see then you can see now for a normal human being who is not having any physical it grams per kilogram of body body weight most of our athlete consume more than 1.6 to 2 gram kilogram a uh, 2 gram per kilogram of body weight so protein in the normal diet and hence do not need the encourage no uh, do not need to be encouraged or educated to increase their protein intake hamara jitni khiladi hain agar wo jo balanced diet khayega to unko jo zarurat hai 1.6 to 2 gram tak per kilogram of body weight ye unko mil jayega apne khane se apna normal khane se un isliye hum log apni khiladiyon ko एजुकेट करना है और शुड नॉट एनकरेज उनको एनकरेज नहीं करना टू इंक्रीज दर प्रोटीन इनटेक वी कम इन डिटेल्स इन अदर कमिंग स्लाइड्स सम रेसिस्टेंस ट्रेन एथलीट लाइक बॉडी बिल्डर्स प्रोस वेट लिफ्टर्स टेक अप टू 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 थ्री ग्राम्स ऑफ प्रोटीन पर किलोग्राम ऑफ बॉडी वेट एंड व्हिच इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड नाउ लेट अस सी from which all the food you can get 10 gram of protein a day so just calculate and assume that how much protein intake is there with your athletes sure that i know that many many of this food have been consumed by our athletes in our system so it is uh, i'm sure that you they will be able to get the required protein in from the uh, normal balanced diet these are the diets eggs milk yogurt cheese chicken mutton fish bread cereals all all this the protein intake rather high protein intake per session the research say research suggests that it is it is depend upon the total balance of the diet and timing of protein carbohydrate meals and snack in relation to training and competition that is also explained by ms mehra in the last week that what food should be taken before the training and what what food should be taken after the training etc etc and what food should be the uh, should be taken from for the athletes before competition and after competition now i request i request my now my our athletic association president is available with us i request uh, sir if you have any input to add kindly give us some input on this subject yeah Uh, thank um as i said there are three major issues and i said that on the first day there are three major issues that indian athletics faces one is very early age overtraining and burning out the athlete the second is overage and fudging of certificates and the third is doping if we can if we can fight these three india will be world champions we have great records in the juniors it is a shame it is a shame that we cannot it's a shame that we cannot go
name and I can read. I can read something on chat. You cannot be successful in international competition without using Bansdag Peter J L Thompson, 2009. Introduction to coaching I W A. Yes, yes, this is absolutely correct. But that time is over. What was in 2009 and what is in 2020? is completely different longanathan please understand that now with blood passport now with the out of competition testing in 2009 we were doing 50 tests in india every year today we are doing 1200 tests and we are going to increase this so you will get caught and and the only people who can really stop this are the coaches who have to advise their athletes or those who are giving it has to stop please understand that 2009 and today 2020 is a completely different scenario what wada is doing now what aiu unit is doing now there were athletes in india who nada left but wada went to cash challenged it and gave them a four year ban so we can try to manipulate things here in india we can try all the nonsense that we can but finally wada will not leave you so if any of you think that you will get away the any of you think you can get away please understand you will not get away and my humble request to you is with joined hands please stay away from dope we are moving now to state meets to do dope control in my own state after telling them dope control will come in one only one section four people got caught for doping we sent 65 in maharashtra i'm talking about my own state we sent 55 athletes for testing 54 were found to be overage for medical testing so it is the coaches i know why some coaches are doing some coaches are very good some coaches are fighting this tooth and nail and if you th think that the world is doing this there is no chance any top athlete today can do it yes in the times of 90s when it was the worst in the time of या या कॉल कर या बट नाउ कैन यू हियर मी या ओके हाउ डू आई शिफ्ट इट या Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, what I'm saying is, I don't know. You said there was no sound. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that what happened in 
209 is not valid anymore in 2020. Point number one. Point number two, there is blood passport. Point number three, we were testing something like 50 samples in 2009 and 2020. In India, we are testing close to 1,500 samples and this will go up. We are going to test at state meet. We are going to test for all trials for jobs, whether it's police, railways, uh, services. We are going to test at inter-railways, inter-police, inter-services, all those meets. You cannot run away. Please understand you will not be able to run away. You will be caught. The dope available in India is third class synthetic dope. And, and when and when you, when you uh, take this, it can remain in your system for a year. So please understand, don't do this. We are now moving for criminalization of doping. So if a junior athlete has been given dope by a coach, the coach will go to jail. Uh, Justice, Justice Mudgal has got the draft ready. And Athletics Federation has championed this cause to take it to parliament and make it a law that coaches will go to jail if a junior athlete says that the coach gave it to me. So please be very careful from day one. Make sure that you are the one who becomes the champion to fight this cause. You have to be the champion. I join my hands and beg of you. Please do not encourage doping because you do that. You will go to jail in a year or two. So this is where we are and, and please help us because India is amongst the top three countries in the world for doping. We have to stop this. We have to stop this and only you people can help us to stop this. Adil Sumariwala Athletic Federation of India president can't do anything by himself. So Please mm. help us. I wish you the best of luck. Radha, thank you for a very lovely uh, uh, presentation that you are making. I have to leave for another call at 11. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, we'll join to our session. Sorry, please wait for some minutes because I have to share it again. Uh, can you see the slides? So, recent studies suggest that Rather than high protein intake per session, it should be focused on the total balance of diet as well the timing of protein, carbohydrate, meals and snacks in relation to training and competition. So, Ms. Mihira already has explained what food should be taken before competition, what should be taken before training and what should, should be taken after competition and what type of food and protein and carbohydrate should be taken after training. So I'm not going much detail in that. And now let us see what is milk versus, versus whey protein. Most of us, most of our trainees, most of us, we are running behind whey protein. The whole milk is 82% casein, that is a slow absorption protein, and 18% is whey, that is a fast absorption protein. Whey is a byproduct of whole milk after cheese production, and whey protein power is 10 times more than more expensive than milk. That is a very important thing to note. Whey protein is 10 times more expensive than milk. Some of the coaches say that uh, my athlete is not able to balance her diet or his diet. So we go for the whey protein and other proteins. I'm, I'm so surprised in that when the whey protein is 10 times more expensive. Why he or she cannot have a proper balanced diet every day? Anyway, let us not get into the discussion of such things. And the whey, whey, whey protein stimulates early protein synthesis, but due to fast oxidation, 
and this is this effect is short acting and complete depleting within an hour the case in stimulates late protein synthesis which lasts for 4 to 7 hours besides case in reduced muscle protein breakdown then now you are the judge what should be taken and what should not be taken and about the sports recovery drink most of our athletes are fascinated to have the sports recovery drink comes in the bottle and which is commercially available uh, having a lot of synthetic synthetic ingredients in that but but uh, milk can be a very good sports recovery drink if an athlete is not uh, lactose tolerant in lactose lactose intolerant athletes people can be substituted with soya milk or soya especially soya milk so we should make we should know that besides water milk also provide high quantity of protein carbohydrate vitamins electrolytes and minerals such as calcium and thus it is a very good sports recovery drink the nutrition supplements and doping this is the subject which i give more emphasis than doping because most of our us coaches knows about doping and their consequence and the sanctions how it is done but some may be having a new information about this food supplements and doping and we all must aware that the athlete himself is responsible for everything they eat and drink they should be responsible for whatever the things they take whatever the sports supplements they take whatever the food they take and they are the sole responsible person for any consequence of in dop violation as i said in the beginning slides surveys have suggested that one in four may result in a positive test one in four food supplement may result in a positive test then prohibited compounds are never declared in the label none of the uh, food supplement label you can find that this contains this uh, prohibited substance or prohibited compounds but may be uh, showing so many other ingredients and at present we cannot guarantee of the purity of any commercial food supplement as i said in the beginning if there is any doubt if you have any doubt at all please don't take it whenever you are suggesting an, uh, or uh, advising on some food supplement this website is of united states uh, anti doping agency if you get into that you can find get some information about the food supplement which you are going to buy first you realize then recognize then reduce if you get into this if you get into this site of united states anti doping agencies you will get some guidance i'm not telling you that you will get complete guidance what food supplement is a red flag and what food supplement is having some uh, prohibited enhance uh, the prohibited substance which enhance sports realize what we should realize we should realize that dietary supplements are risky they could contain prohibited substances can cause health problems and it can harm you you, you can be harmed by supplements as i said the excess uh, intake of protein can cause kidney damage if you take if the need of uh, as i said in the beginning the beginning slides your need is for example 150 grams or 120 grams protein per day if you consume if you consume 250 grams it definitely will cause you a kidney problem and say, similarly if you take lot of creatine that also can be a cause for a kidney damage so 
it can harm your the food supplement can harm you and laws and regulation will not protect you you cannot say that i have taken only this food supplement as so many incidents in our country they take oath on their parents saying that i have not consumed other than any other anything other than food supplement i did not took i did not take any uh, uh, prohibited substances गोली वोली में कुछ नहीं खाया मैंने तो सिर्फ फूड सप्लीमेंट ही खाया खसम खा लेता हूं मेरे आगे कुछ लोग ऐसे रो के बोला मैं क्या बोल रहा हूं ये जो प्रोहिबिटेड सब्सटेंस उसके बॉडी में आया शायद वो जो फूड सप्लीमेंट खाया हो जो लोग बोलता है मैं तो इंपोर्ट करता हूं यूएसए से ऑस्ट्रेलिया से बट यू मस्ट मेक श्योर दैट देर इज नो एन नो रेगुलेशन विल प्रोटेक्ट यू and doctors and coaches who prescribe you suggest you may not understand the risk of use of this supplement and the consequence so you should realize this and recognize you recognize the risk when you see it on the labels you can learn to recognize when it come to identify risk of risky supplements i'll just give you some guidelines learn to recognize names that might indicate a stimulant or steroid is present if you see ingredients on a supplement label that have numbers coupled with greek letters like 1a b 1b or 3a 3b or 17a or b etc and the phrases any of these phrases below ends or start with the product might contain steroids or stimulants you can ju just have a look definitely i will be sharing this video i'm sorry the powerpoints of course it may sometimes sometimes somebody may sue against me but i don't care i may share you all this video and reduce how can you reduce the risk of food supplement reduce your risk no supplement you know that you know very well no supplements are certified by wada or nada many claim many company claim that it is tested and but they don't they, they don't say that wada tested or nada tested and what we can do how can we reduce the risk in some nsf they have a food supplement procurement committee it is not that whatever the coaches whatever the national coaches say that i want this i want that i want this but the federation have a food supplement procurement committee uh leading with a, a medical doctor a recovery expert some of coaches like chief coach or high performance director then that committee will decide and the committee will decide what to be taken but i don't make 100% guarantee that that also will not be containing any prohibited substances for example there are some company like jnc company but some of the product of jnc company is is uh, clear clean but some of the product of the same company also is contaminated there are some cases so if such national sports federation make a committee of pro uh, procuring a food supplement the risk will be reduced that's only i want to say about that and many cases i have seen i heard even from my state sir we have not given anything some of the coaches say we have not uh, athletes say we have not taken anything that other than ashwagandha or amikram or some ayurvedic products which they get they get from the market which and which claims then enhance the sport performance you can find very interesting advertisement from celebrity to offering uh, the quality of it for example in kerala mohanlal say take breathe easy and take pankaj kasturi and take breathe easy that but you don't know what are the ingredients in that and so i request you all i request my friend coaches and you please don't uh, administrate and don't don't give any ayurvedic supplement which you get from market 
claiming that it will enhance sports performance or as a stimulant. Ayurveda and how homeopathy have stood the test of time people's prescription is that they are effective and safe. But please don't believe it is not safe. There are so many cases in our country that has been uh, become a victim of using Ayurveda and homeopathy. So the fact is that the ingredients are unknown and it's not effective product labeling and not recognized by Food and Drugs Administration. We can see some of the victims, like you must have heard Uppal Taranga is a Sri Lankan opening batsman tested positive for uh, prednisol. It's a, a agent, a, a prohibited substance during the Cricket World Cup 2011. His claim was it is presumed that these banned substances came from uh, his homeopathy prescription by popular Sri Lankan homeopath treatment of for homeopath for treatment of bronchial asthma. So we should not get a victim of using Ayurveda or homeopathy substitute for uh, as a food supplement. Now choice is yours. This or this. In the end, I about in this session, I just want to say that it is not that we don't need food supplement. We need food supplement because in some cases of vegetarian athletes, the some of the vegetable vegetable protein is uh, veg, uh, vegetarian athletes they get the vegetable protein from their food, but some of the essential amino acids, some of other com, uh, other vitamin like B12 and other uh, food supplement like foods like uh, creatine is not available in the vegetable protein. In that cases. By, on, uh, by monitoring a medical doctor or a recovery expert, they can go how much it is required. That is not that 30 grams of, uh, I've seen many of my, our athletes. They take 10 eggs from the mess and some a uh, uh, couple of glasses of milk, then some cereals. After going to the room, taking at least 20, 25 grams of synthetic protein in addition. That is that what is not required. And I've seen some of the athletes. You know, there are, as I said, most of the thing, most of the uh, required protein, amino acid, creatine, everything is available now, food, natural food. For example, nowadays it is a mania, as otherwise a trend. The athletes take out the egg, yellow egg yolk and take out the skin and eat it, well, egg white and eat it. But this egg yolk contains proteins and even creatine, natural creatine. The same, similarly, if you are a non-vegetarian at non-veg athletes, and if you take meat, there's a lot of creatine in that. There's no need to take creatine in addition. So finally, I say that you have to decide whether you need to have a food supplement to do your athletic performance. And in other words, as I said, it's about 10,000 hours. That means about eight to nine years it takes to it take for an athlete to reach his high performance, to peak his, to reach his high peak performance. So we, our athletes, have to work for a long term. From the age of 16, if you start administrating food supplement, or if you give food supplement to the athlete, then he may have to take the same for eight to nine years. In addition, I want to remind you that it is some learning from, from me that the athletes below 16 years should not be encouraged with any food supplement because we are stopping the natural uh, ability of our athlete to synthesize protein and whatever, whatever, whatever the thing. So in the later stage, they will be a dependent of food supplement if you start giving or the athlete taking food supplement from the age of 14, 15. So please restrict uh, giving food supplement to the athletes under 16. So thank you so much. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry it has been disturbed and I'm sure that it could have been a uh, little more 
better if the session was not disturbed the internet connection has lost so thank you so much listening and let us all say no to doping thank you very much now i have seen some of the questions if uh, mr rajmohan you can come out with the questions if there are i have seen some of the questions Yes, Rajmohan. Before in hand, I just want clear from one of my coach, one of my level one coach. I had a question because during my uh, uh, session, I just noticed that uh, Mr. Loganathan is a level one coach, uh, very is a biomechanic expert. So I like to say Loganathan and to all my friends the interpretation. of athletic uh, introduction of coaching theory what he has done is not uh, correct no iwf manual will say or no iwf literature will say, i'm sorry world athletic literature will say that without doping one cannot reach high performance so we will you can even uh, send me mail i think you have my email id i can give more clarification on this subject thank you Anything else, Mr. Rajmohan? Yes, Rajmohan, you have been made co-host. You can just give me the questions, <clears throat> sir. One question is, sir, what is ABP and is it started? Uh, is it started in Indian athletics? Uh, of course, it's a very good question. ABP means athlete biological passport. It's an electronic record maintained by even by AU and WADA. by testing many times the athlete sample and by this they will be able to monitor the difference in their uh, uh the the in their their like uh, uh, in their uh, blood level like for example uh, testosterone level or etc so it it helps to monitor that an athlete is taking any prohibited substances that is abp but it is not started with nada we have with world anti doping agency and athlete integrity unit thank you sir sir next question is is nada or wada can target any athlete yes i told you in the in my uh, session itself suppose if a group is been trained by a coach as a previous history of uh, doping or some leading athletes who had an earlier history of doping and came back to came back to the training after the sanction they can be target nada or wada can target any athlete uh, they want please don't complain that every time my athlete is been mere khiladi ko hi dekhta hai wo baki ko chhod deta hai it is not that federation or sai will not ask nada or wada to test rajmohan or nagesh it is their decision and they come and do the dop control and they can very well target any athlete or any group of athletes thank you sir sir uh, next question is is the dop test is only during the competition or uh, what is the dop test can be Conducted or uh, it can be conducted during the competition or out of competition. You only explain it. Can you explain once more time, sir? Uh, the uh, the dope test can be conducted during competition or out of competition. Out of comp during competition, you know very well whether he is under fourteen 
or uh, in nick jam or in a junior championship or in a senior uh, in a sub junior championship or in a school championship in a hello india competition they can be tested there is no age restriction as on today and then out of competition test is that the the test conducted uh, not during competition out of competition as i said the in the in the session that uh, there is a whereabout list been published almost all every year maybe for one year maybe two year most of our elite athletes are under whereabout and nada or what i can come and test when uh, during the training and the test can be conducted in the uh, in the training camp that also can be called as out of competition is it clear is it make sense thank you yes sir yes sir sir uh, is wada or nada an independent body or they are controlled by any government organization or something like that wada i i forgot to tell in whenever when i spoke about wada wada is an independent agency it is not working under any uh, government or not with any connection with international olympic committee not not connected world athletic association or anything and they are an independent entity and nada of course nada has to be abided by the rules of wada and it is a they have to get affiliated by wada and nada also is an independent agency working in the government under the in government but it is an independent agency not under um, youth ministry or they don't listen to youth ministry or sports authority of india or etc so they are they both are independent agency thank you sir sir uh, so many questions we missed because of the internet connection sir uh, i have take, taken up these questions only if there any anything left out with mr walker we can also address these same questions any more question you can type in the chat box because due to internet disturbance we could not get all the questions sir i'm good here uh walker could you find any questions Walker, you are unmuted. Okay. Uh, there was one question regarding mechanical doping, um, and that's uh, something we usually find. For example, um, this disabled athletes when we're talking about the uh, prosthesis, or if you uh, remember the discussion about uh, Nike's new running shoe, um, where technical specifications have been changed to increase the biomechanical advantages uh, for the runners. So that's what we call. mechanical doping um but that of course has nothing to do with uh, the supplementation and um there is one uh, other question from ruvin singh from uttarakhand if doping is important or not and um personally i feel a bit disappointed now because i think the question uh, is after this presentation is not relevant yeah as coaches we have to ensure that our sport is clean and i think uh, adila our president he also made it quite clear that especially in india we have to educate our athletes um, we have to take the responsibility and uh, coming from a different country i, I can assure you that there are, it's no problem to develop world class athletes without doping yeah um, mr radakrishnan already mentioned that this iwf code was taken out of context so as coaches if you if you use doping in your training i think you don't deserve to be called a coach um we we had a couple of discussions about this and personally i feel um if you're prescribing 
drugs to your athletes, um, you know, even the groundsmen are able to train your athletes. So we have to be very strict on that. If, if you're using doping, I think you're actually diminishing your own quality as a coach. And that's something which has to be very clear. Um, so I think, yeah, we need to work on this together. It needs a unified approach. Um, I like the idea that a lot of you are suggesting dope tests even for the Jews and junior athletes because we know this is a big problem in India. But it's your responsibility again as a coach to avoid such situations. Yeah? And you have to educate your athletes about this. So doping is definitely something we have to avoid. Supplementation with the Jews and junior athletes is also not necessary if you're following a proper diet. Um, but again, in the end, it comes all back to the athlete's education and that again depends on your quality and also your responsibility as a coach. Uh, there is another question from Mr. Babu, Secretary of Kerala State Athletic Association. He himself is a coach as well. Uh, the question is that nutrition supplements are not necessary for athletes and not recommended. In that case, why national campus are consuming? Sir, uh, exactly. I told in the session that uh, food supplements are required for elite level and that has to be tested. Bi biochemically, they should be tested and we should find the deficiency in athletes. And I didn't say that I didn't say that elite athlete doesn't need. They are in need, but it should be uh, into control. It is not that asan they, they like. But in national camps, I'm sure that we have, I told you that we have a, I told in the session that we have a food uh, supplement procuring committee. Whatever the coach asks, we are not providing. For example, a walking coach is asking for 2 kg protein powder during pre-competition season. Definitely we look why, we, why he need it. So we are doing it. And again, I remind you, sir, that it is not that food supplement is not required, but it is not recommended as it is not essential if you are athlete are getting a balanced diet. I think uh, uh, it is clear for you and makes sense. Thank you, sir. Thank you for asking question. Then there was another question from uh, one participant that Nada, do have any list of Ayurvedic substances which doesn't uh, contain any prohibited substances? Friend, I think I explained in my whole session that Vada or Nada doesn't recommend any food supplement, whether it is Ayurvedic or whether it is allopathic or whether it is homeopathic. And, uh, and they will not give any certificate as well. So there is no such list. Thank you. Uh, there is a question from a friend from my Bangladesh. If someone takes drugs in a national meet, how can you identify if this country does not have a drug test? Drug test? Of course, though your country doesn't have a lab or a national anti-doping agency, your federation can take initiative for sending the samples, collecting the samples in a proper way and sending the sample to the nearby countries. <laughs> nearby country and get tested. Of course, it is expensive, but it definitely it will allow your country to have a dope test. Thank you, Faiya, for your question. Again, after the session, there is a question, taking protein, is it helpful to us or not? यादव जी मैंने आपका पूरा सेशन में यही बताया था जब जितनी प्रोटीन तो जरूरत है जितनी प्रोटीन जरूरत है उतनी चाहिए अपनी बॉडी के लिए अगर आप ज्यादा खा लिया तो आपका इट विल कॉज आपको हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम्स हो जाएगा जैसे किडनी डैमेज हो जाएगा किडनी क्रिएटिन फॉर्मेशन इन योर किडनी किडनी विल बी इंक्रीज देयर आर सो मेनी थिंग्स एंड हमारा जो खाने में ये मैंने आपको दिखा दिया था 20 10 20 चीजें 
अपने खिलाड़ी खाते हैं अगर वो खाना ठीक से बैलेंस खाना खाएगा तो हमें प्रोटीन पाउडर प्रोटीन सप्लीमेंट का जरूरत नहीं है प्रोटीन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इट विल हेल्प अस फॉर इंप्रूविंग द परफॉर्मेंस एंड ट्रेनिंग Uh, there is a question of course what is amino acids but of course we are not referring uh, regarding nutrition but i can just tell you something which i know that there are to pro to synthesize synthesize protein we need uh, different amino acids and for example in vegetable protein such amino acids or the essential amino acids are not available but in animal protein this such essential amino acids are available and amino acids are also helps to synthesize synthesize the creatine from your food hope it is clear but it is not very clear i know that but uh, it is an subject in nutrition uh hope uh any more questions uh there is a question requesting to athletics federation of india to conduct doping awareness classes in the beginning i said educating your athlete is your responsibility than of federation or the government or nada or sai so aap log apne aap apne jo khiladiyon ko educate kar liye kar dijiye inka jo consequence ka aur difficulties ka uh another question from one of my friend that uh, coach where is there any plan to identify doping in initial level mean district level uh my dear friend uh, i'm from my coaching experience i can i can easily find an athlete who is coming for training with me whether he is using any drug it is there is no technique not nothing because by the by his behavior by the way he is doing training by the way he is taking not taking recovery by this all you will be able to identify that he or she is under some uh under some substance or using some prohibited substance so otherwise we will not be able to conduct drop test in district level or uh, district school level of course uh, some of the state championship we are uh, the the state federation request uh, we may send the, the the nada will send their team by owing the expenses of them
i think uh, there is no more questions thank you very much at the same time i apologize for the internet uh, problems in between even it have affected me of my flow of my speaking speaking also sorry for that i apologize and uh, we'll make sure that such problem should not will not arise on tomorrow this is the first day we are experiencing we have otherwise we had a very powerful internet connection a wifi connection the sai seminar hall but today i don't know there is heavy raining outside but doesn't make any difference but i don't know that what is the reason ex ex uh, exactly so i conclude this session i hand over my mic to mr walker to conclude this session thank you so much okay thank you very much for a very comprehensive session um I think that was a very good insight and the message was extremely clear that we have to avoid doping at all costs, that we need to use supplements wisely, especially for the juice and junior athletes. So again, coaches, it's up to you to apply this knowledge on the ground um, after the lockdown is over. Uh, there was a question, uh, maybe the last one, um, regarding the situation during the lockdown. Since the athletes are not able to train properly right now, I think we also don't have to care too much about uh, the nutrition we've already heard that they need to reduce the amount of carbohydrates a bit to avoid weight gain but that's it so mr radakrishnan thanks a lot um a very nice presentation and coaches we will see you tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m for a session on periodized strength training yeah thanks a lot get some rest and apply what you've learned bye thank you walker now i request Mr. Kamal Ali Khan.